am I the asshole for not defending my sister after my husband said good luck you'll need it marrying her to her fiance? My husband used to get along with my family until my sister falsely accused him of cheating on me. He understandably doesn't like her anymore, but he's usually civil towards her. Well, my sister recently announced her engagement, and while everybody congratulated her, my husband turned to her fiancé and said, good luck, you'll need it marrying her. I was shocked he would say something like that, especially in front of my parents, but I never said anything as I didn't want to fight with him in front of everybody. My sister kept giving me a look like she expected me to say something, and when I didn't, she yelled at him herself. I made us leave because I could see us being there wasn't helping the situation. My sister has been texting me about what happened, mostly taking digs at my husband. She gets angry every time I ask her to stop and thinks I'm siding with him when he was in the wrong. Things have gotten worse because I said I'm not going wedding dress shopping with her and she's blaming my husband for that too. My husband has agreed to stop responding, but she wants me to make him apologize and to agree to visit when she wants to go wedding dress shopping. Which I can't do. Am I wrong? <gasps> Am I the asshole for banning my sister and her boyfriend from my apartment after they did the nasty in my bed? I, 28 male, had to travel overseas for a couple weeks for week-related reasons. My sister's 19 female college is nearby and she offered to feed my cats and water my plants while I was gone. I said sure thanks and told her she was welcome to stay there while I was gone since she lives in a dorm. Anyways, when I got home, my sister was there with her boyfriend. That was fine because I had always thought he was a really cool guy, but one thing I noticed was that my sheets were still in my washer. I didn't think much of it at first, but... My sheets were still in my washer, but I didn't think anything of it. I assumed my sister waited to wash them since she was using my bed while she was there. But she tells me, sorry, my boyfriend and I were using the bed last night. This grossed me out and I don't think I'm being unreasonable not wanting people to do the nasty in my bed. My sister told me to relax and said I was being a prude American because her boyfriend is from Ireland. She said that us Americans stigmatize sex and that she washed the sheets so it's fine. I said it's not and told her to get out and she's not welcome here anymore. Mom says I'm overreacting. Am I the asshole for refusing to attend my brother's wedding because of the dress code? My brother is getting married in a few months and his future wife recently asked me to be a part of their bridal party. I was thrilled and excited to be included but then she informed me that the dress code for the bridal party was gender specific with women expected to wear dresses and men expected to wear suits. As someone who identifies as non-binary and is more masculine presenting, I'm uncomfortable. I don't want to conform to a gender binary that doesn't accurately represent me. I brought this up to my brother and his fiance, but they insisted they wanted all their guests to adhere to the dress code. As someone who identifies as non-binary and is more masculine presenting, this makes me uncomfortable. I brought this up to my brother and his fiance, but they insisted they want all their guests to adhere to the dress code, regardless of how it made them feel. I ultimately decided that I didn't want to attend the wedding as I didn't feel comfortable being pressured to conform to a gender binary that didn't represent me. My brother and his fiance are now upset with me, accusing me of being difficult and not willing to compromise. They even involved my mom who said I could put aside my identity for one day to make the day special for my brother. Am I the asshole for not adopting my dying best friend's dog and buying a puppy from a breeder instead? My best friend is dying of cancer and could pass away any moment. Today, I was visiting and showed him a picture of the German Shepherd puppy I put a security deposit on and will be ready to take home in four weeks. I've always wanted a German Shepherd puppy, so I was so excited and showed him the pictures. I thought maybe the pictures would bring him at least a little moment of joy, even if the moment was fleeting. But instead, things got awkward. After a few minutes of awkwardness, I asked what was wrong. He said that his cousin who was supposed to take his two-year-old pug named Horace could no longer take him. He said I could save a lot of money by taking his dog. I looked over at Horace and he looked back at me, or he tried to look at me, but he's got one wondering eye that pretty much is always looking towards the ceiling but I could feel his glare with his good eye. Horace is not a good dog, and this is not me being rude. This is simply me knowing Horace. He poops in the house and tears stuff up, and he's always yapping. Meanie, I'm not a fan of pugs. They look like their faces have been hit with a shovel, and they're always gasping for air with their eyes bulging out. So I said no because I know he's not a good dog, and he got mad.
Am I the asshole for letting my in-laws have some of my special fudge and causing them to spend the weekend? My in-laws always tell stories about when they were young and how they went to Lollapalooza and Burning Man before it all got commercial. I love hearing stories about their good old days and they're so amusing. My favorite is about how father-in-law missed seeing Nirvana in some dive bar because he had never heard of them. I make my own special snacks and they're pretty strong. We don't have kids yet so I'm okay just leaving them out with a warning note for my wife. The label literally says don't make any plans for a while. So my in-laws were over this weekend and said they wanted to try my fudge. I said they were welcome to try my fudge, but they should try just a quarter of one of my fudge pieces. This is what my wife takes, and it's just enough to have a great time, but also function the next day. But my in-laws decided they were old school, and I was shining them on. They each took a full piece, and that was Friday night. They didn't move from the couch until Saturday afternoon. They had plans that went sideways, and I'm not sure how that's my fault. They literally took four times as much as I recommended. My wife is upset with me, and so are my in-laws. Am I wrong? Am I the asshole for not wanting to be driven around by women, including my girlfriend? When I, 27 male, was a kid, I had a traumatic experience and was in a car accident. It was in the school bus, which was being driven by a lady, and since then, I've had a phobia of being a passenger in a vehicle being driven by a woman. My mom did not drive, and even when my older sister learned how to drive, I refused to drive with her, even though my other siblings did. I do have my license, but not a car, and when I take public transit, I also take the next bus if a woman is driving. And this is a phobia, and I do not think women should not drive or anything. This is a phobia, and I do not think women should not drive. Recently, my girlfriend and I moved in together, and she has a car. She's pretty upset with me as whenever we go out, I insist on driving her car. She says it feels like I'm a misogynist when it's just a phobia. I said I'd be okay taking public transportation and she could drive her car and we could travel separate, but she thinks that's not a solution and I should get over it. So I just really need to know, am I wrong? It's not like I'm telling her she can't drive and I apply this rule to everyone. I also told her she was free to ask my parents about my past. Am I the asshole for telling my husband he ruined my birthday again? So today is my 28th birthday and I'm really into birthdays and holidays and believe in celebrating them to the max. I'm the planner and the giver in my family and also my extended family. So I plan birthdays, get-togethers, gifts, travel, all that. I'm also a stay-at-home mom due to having a son with complex medical and behavioral needs. I've been with him 24-7 for the last week as it's school break and he's extremely clingy. And I also had a respiratory cold during this time and still kept up with my duties. My husband's birthday was last month and as usual, I planned something for him. Now for my birthday, I wanted help with the kids and... For my birthday, I told him I just wanted help with the kids, the house cleaned, a nap, and him to cook supper or take me out. And maybe a homemade gift and a cake. Yesterday, he started complaining of a sore throat, but everything looked fine and he stayed up playing video games. This morning, he says he's sick but has no visible symptoms and stayed up on Xbox Live talking just fine. Slept all day, but I think it's because he stayed up playing games. Meanwhile, I make my own cake, take care of the kids, and do my chores. He didn't even tell me happy birthday. So I went over to my parents and he called and asked why. I said he ruined my birthday and he said I'm an adult and birthdays aren't a big deal after 21. Am I the asshole for calling my fiancé a effing embarrassment? I've been seeing my fiancé for four years now and came into the relationship with two boys. They're 12 and 9 and once a year me and the boys go to my family's vacation home with the entire family and up until this year my fiancé did not attend. But now that we're engaged in merging families, the family asked that he come too. I explained to him prior that during our stay with the family, my kids do not have a bedtime. We do a lot of night activities like swimming in the pool, karaoke, fires, nightly strolls, and so on. I explained that some nights they're up until 11 to midnight and it's once a year and no big deal. First night he was stressing because the boys were in the pool at 10 p.m. and he felt they should be in bed already. I reminded him we're not enforcing a bedtime here and he let it go the first night. The second night the boys were up at 9 p.m. and he said you're lucky you're even still awake right now and you should be in bed in front of my mom who looked mortified. I told him to stop in private, but he said it's going to mess with their schedules, but I stood for him and told him to knock it off. Well, last night, my fiancé started getting angry, sighing every time he looks at my kids still awake, and I finally pulled him aside. 
I called him an embarrassment because he keeps doing it in front of my family. And if he can't control it for a week, he should leave. Am I the asshole for not punishing my seven-year-old daughter for her play relationships? My husband and I have a seven-year-old daughter, Layla. A few months ago, Layla got a boyfriend, Lucas. They're both seven, so it's obviously not a real relationship. They just hold hands sometimes and draw each other hearts for Valentine's Day. This week, Layla was apparently holding hands with another boy who also sent Layla a Valentine's Day love letter. Lucas took offense to it and we found out because Lucas's parents called to tell us Lucas won't be coming over to us this Saturday anymore. He's mad at Layla and my husband wants us to punish Layla and wants me to have a talk with her about faithfulness. So her fake boyfriend Lucas is mad because Layla was holding hands with another boy. So now he doesn't want to come over and my husband wants us to punish Layla and wants me to talk to her about faithfulness. At first I thought he was joking but no, he was serious. He says that Layla cheated on Lucas and as a mother I should do something about it. I told my husband that Layla is seven, not a cheater, and I won't treat her as such. He then accused me of raising a cheater and encouraging the bad behavior. So, am I wrong for not wanting to punish Layla?